In this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate the Xiaomi Akara multi-purpose sensor into Home Assistant. I've got three cool automation ideas. This is Gio from Digital Spring Media, and let's get started. So in order to do this project, you're going to need an existing installation of Home Assistant, a Combi 2 stick, Decons running, and one of these, there's a multi-purpose sensor. So you can pick one of these up for around 15 uh, dollars or pounds on Amazon. I've got a link in the description below. They're really, really, really convenient. Uh, they really look good. Form factor, they're quite small. There are three sensors in it. A temperature sensor, a humidity sensor, and a pressure, a pressure sensor. It uses the Zigbee protocol and integrates with the Xiaomi Akara hub, where you've got many other products. I've reviewed already a contact sensor in my previous video, which I'll link down below. If you're connecting this to Home Assistant, you don't require the hub. So it's one less thing you need to worry about. You just need a Combi 2 stick. You can pick one up for 30 pounds or $35 roughly. And it serves a lot of purposes and it connects all of your Zigbee uh, devices via MQTTT. So go to your Decons tab. I use Foscon to click Foscon. Go to sensors, add a new sensor. So as you can see, I've already configured it here, multi-sensor, Xiaomi, and I've got the values that's pulling through. But if you're doing this from scratch, click add new sensor, then go other, then tap the button on the motion sensor. You should see a blink. When it blinks, you'll have a green sensor here. And then that will sort of give you the message that everything is ready to go and you can click ready and this will be set up for you. So I'm going to delete this sensor now and do that for you. I'm going to add a new sensor, other, tap the button. Okay, so the sensor is ready now. I'll click ready and it's all configured now. So we're back in Home Assistant now at this stage and I've got a glance card with the three values that are coming direct from the multi-sensor. I have the temperature here, the multi-sensor, so this is the air pressure, and then I have the humidity. So each one of these keeps a history and it updates. I believe it updates every half an hour, but I will double check that and I will correct that if that information is incorrect. But I think you can also um, ping a refresh by just tapping the button. So that will send a, uh, a, an instant temperature reading back to Home Assistant. So I'm going to take this little sensor and I'm going to put this in a few different places around my home. I'm going to be putting this in the fridge first so I can track the temperature in the fridge and I'll create a little automation that lets me know if the fridge is no longer working anymore. That's going to really help me, you know, avoid food going bad. So we're now in the automation tab and I'm ready to start writing the automation. So I had a little quick Google and it looks like the ideal temperature of a fridge is around five to eight degrees. So let's say eight degrees is my threshold. So if it goes over eight degrees then I have a problem with my fridge, probably the, the power's gone. And you can also use one of these wizards, which might be useful if you're like a beginner. So click on configuration, click on automations, and you'll have a plus sign right here. Click on the plus sign and we've got our automation screen. So here we can give it our automation a name. So we have fridge notification. We can give it an optional description. So this could actually create the code in the automation.yaml file. So you both you'll achieve the same thing. So I'm gonna pick numeric state and I'm looking for my temperature sensor which is central temperature underscore free and I'm saying something anything above eight degrees for me is a problem maybe we want this to be for eight degrees for at least mm, five minutes or, or not I mean this is an optional step so you could say I want it to be at least for five seconds so that it wasn't a mistake it wasn't like a momentary uh, someone like opened the fridge and the temperature went up so maybe we can put five seconds. Actions, so here we're going to trigger our 
service and we're going to call our text to speech Google say service and as usual this service has two uh, needs two data points an entity ID and a message my message is going to be fridge is too warm entity ID so this is going to be my Google mini in the kitchen that's kitchen speaker and there you have it so you click the save button if you see this enable disable and you don't see any error messages coming up here or here then you know you're good to go so you can go and test this out the easiest way to test it out without waiting for temperatures to change is to go to the developer tool look for your entity so your multi-sensor temperature free and here you can pick a set a state so you can say okay I'm um, nine degrees and you can set the state to nine degrees this should then trigger the automation and Google Mini to sort of tell us oh uh, things haven't worked so well so going back to the automation.yaml file I don't like how this sort of all puts all the automations together it changes the formattings that I like having some space between one and the other and it also generates this weird ID which I guess some sort of internal ID and I don't not a fan of the in the the order in which uh, things are, are displayed for me the platform is something that you would need to specify first and then you would then specify the entity the above and the four but I guess it doesn't matter which way around it works because this does work so I do prefer typing it out manually but if you do prefer the other option then you know you can potentially do that one first and come to the code and readjust it uh, that might help I will also remove this condition because I don't like this the look of it it's one extra line in the code which you can get rid of so now we're going to look into the humidity sensor it's going to be very similar to the temperature sensor and also similar to the air pressure sensor as in is they have a specific value that we're going to look at in the state value and then we can have a an automation that triggers uh, an alert in case the value is out of that boundary so for example for humidity I've just done a quick Google search and apparently it feels like the optimal humidity is like 40 to 50 percent humidity sensor humidity sensor is great to use in like situations like bathrooms or shower rooms where ever you can for example automate a fan turn on a fan when the humidity picks up or just in general for it's good to have a sense of what is the level of humidity within a house i made a quick google search and the optimal humidity is around 40 to 50 percent i guess this will depend on where you live and the type of home you live in but you can set this and tweak this as you wish so if you were to put your own range you can create an automation that will then notify you whenever that specific sensor picks up uh, an excess of humidity bear in mind that obviously if you have multiple sensors you could do averages or you could just have one particular room with high or low levels of humidity so let's look into this so this time we're going to be using coding directly and we're going to go into the automation.yaml file and we're going to do a lot of copying and pasting from the previous notification which was the fridge notification but we'll just slightly adapt this this shouldn't really take this long that long so ID I would call this humidity notification and same here in terms of the alias so it's still a numeric state yes that's true we want it to maybe have that value for like five minutes that sounds good this time the value instead of 8 we're going to put uh, 55 and we need to update the sensor so if you go to your let me save this first if you go to your developer tool you'll find the name here so this name you will need to copy it and paste it so the name will be different in your setup you will need to find it in the developer tool after you've uh, synced it with decons we're back in the file and let's paste it back in We've got our entity ID now, we've got our uh, 4, so it needs to be above 55 for 5 seconds. And we've got our kitchen speaker again, 
we've got our service Google say and we've got a message in this case humidity is too high save that and reload your automation okay last but not least we have the air pressure sensor the air pressure sensor gives you the ability to understand if it's time maybe to open the window or have some air, general air circulation and it's all about the quality of the air it's measured in HPAs which stands for hectopascal pressure unit and you can probably go doing a lot of reading about it I haven't done it yet but I will be doing it very very soon and this in the developer tool here my one's called pressure 5 and as you can see it's around 1022 I don't know if that's good or not but you can set automation similar to the other two that we've seen already in the video where you can create a threshold if it's above or below and then that will trigger you know, a notification or it could trigger any other smart device if you've enjoyed it subscribe I have another video for you which is quite similar for the Akara contact sensor which I used for my garage automation I link that video right here and there's a playlist also for other smart home automations stay safe